because it's funny. <laughs> Hello, and thank you for tuning in to the Stuff I Heard podcast. I'm your host, Joshua Peak, and I happen to have a special guest today, uh, the lovely and talented Dolores Peak. Hi. I'm not a guest anymore. I live here. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, behind the scenes, she's my uh, uh, executive producer, I guess you'd say. Um, I do listen to all of them. She listens to all of them. We're, I take that back. I did not listen to the five-hour Zoom pizza eating <clears throat> drinking fest that you had during COVID with friends. I did not listen to that one. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't yeah. even remember that one. Yeah, um, I'm sure you don't. But yeah, here we are. This is uh, the 400th episode. Uh, wow, 400? I know, right? Um, I can't tell you how many times I've thought about just ending it, just not doing this anymore, being like, that's it, I'm done. Or doing like a special blowout. I got a new idea. This is what I'm going to do. And this is it. Um, do you have new ideas? Yeah. Meaning a different kind of podcast? Yeah. But um, but also I'm like, yeah, but why change this? I like this. I still like this. I still like this. There's times where I, we've had conversations where you said, uh, you know, you don't have to do one right now. And I'm like, well, I kind of do. Um, and I don't know, I've, I've always had this weird mentality of the point of this for me was to just continue doing it. Um, sort of like, um, okay. So what's, what's the good phrasing? Okay. So here's an idea like playing video games with the kids. Okay. We used to, I used to play video games with the kids. They were, some of them were really good at stuff. Some of them weren't whatever. Uh, I just knew if I got on and kept doing it, I would get better. And so I kind of looked at this as a, with the same mentality of the 10,000 hours. If you put in 10,000 hours, you get better at things, right? So in this thought process, I thought the more I do this, the more I'll get better at it, the more I'll be comfortable. And I have been comfortable. I've been way more open to talk to people that I don't know and to have conversations about things I have nothing, no knowledge about. Or to come in here with no notes, like today, I got nothing written. Uh, whereas normally I have a whole page of stuff and I have tabs open and all this stuff. And I don't know, it's um, it's been fun in a way. And it's been work in a way. And there is that moment where you have to ask your own self, is this, am I doing this because it's fun or am I doing this because I've looked at it as work? I don't know. I do know that in the, I'm not sure how many, so how many years have you been doing podcasts, not YouTube? Because I know YouTube started, you started YouTube in like in 09? 11. 11. Okay. So yeah. I do know that since you started the podcast, that you don't make as many YouTube videos as you used to make. Right. And now why? Well, also, is that because you spend more time on this? Yes, but also, if you look at the videos I was making, a lot of it was incorporated with other hobbies, whether it was working on the Rambler or doing woodworking. Or yes, but now it seems to me like you watch more TV because you want something to talk about on the podcast. Well, also, they're making really good TV right now. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff that's on, and I guess because of COVID, whenever the COVID regulations lifted. Suddenly, everybody was like, oh, we can finally do this episode of the show we were working on that everybody forgot. Or, hey, we have this movie idea, and now we've got the green lights so that we can film this stuff. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of good stuff coming out. But, you know, the idea of the, the, the quote-unquote stuff I heard is just things that you hear. I figured at some point, people would also adapt that and say, you know what I heard, weirdly enough, on this podcast called Stuff I Heard. And just share information and that sharing of information, I think is what my idea of it was going to be in the beginning. It was a sharing of information. It was, you know, conversations that you have with a person that in a little bit of a way needs to be normalized so that other people can say, oh, I'm not weird because I know some people that also are going through the similar situations. I'm, I don't feel like I'm the strange one because I have a, a kid that's going through something unusual or that my parents are going through something unusual or that I struggle with, you know, depression or anxiety or 
uh, weight issues or whatever the case may be, I kind of wanted to normalize all of the things that most people think is their hang up or their block or their issue, whatever you want to call it and allow that conversation to then grow into more conversations because, you know, for a lot of times growing up, people just, they would go through something and they would say, don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. And for me, that was like a red flag. Anytime I heard people say, don't talk about it. The number one thing I wanted to do is talk about it. And I'm like, no, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the thing that we're uncomfortable with. Cause that's how we move through this, honestly. And if we don't, then it ends up us talking to someone professionally that we pay money to because we ha still haven't gotten over it or it leads to further issues that make your family life more depressing and difficult to go through. So I've always been with an attitude of, yeah, this is rough. Let's talk about it. I mean, growing up, the one thing I heard the most was the key to every relationship is communication. So I didn't want to be a person that didn't communicate. I was like, okay, I need to get better at communicating. And I read those books. I read the men are from Mars, women are from Venus and all of those things. And, um, and I was like, okay, how do I adapt this to life, to daily life? And how do I help other people adapt this to their lives? And then one thing I kept coming back to was just that, that conversation, the spark of anything to make people be okay with not being okay. Like we talk about in yeah. church. Well, I mean, like I say, I don't know. I, everybody listens to podcasts for different reasons. Yeah. And my, my number one, and I have, I only have a few. Mine are very usually weekly. Usually it's only once a week and they are, they're not long podcasts. Yeah. I can usually consume the, I, I'm counting your words. I listen to three, three total that comes out weekly mm -hmm. and mine are for oh, I, I'm, I, entertainment information yeah. yeah because the ones i listen about listen to other than yours are pertain to disney right well and only... usually current news updates of things going on with within the disney company right and here's the thing though is is i wonder I mean, I don't know if it would change anything, but I wonder if, I wonder if you listen out of obligation or if you listen because you like it. I like to listen because I like it. Okay. I don't listen because of, no, I'm saying out of because obligation. of me. No, no, no. Wow. You, you, you mean listen to yours or listen yeah. to podcasts in general? To mine. Um, I mean, you're sort of invested in this because this started off with me sitting on the couch next to you going, I'm going to start a podcast. And you were like, Okay. <laughs> I mean that, that's kind of how the the it started, right? I yes, but I guess I listen. I mean, I listen to yours because I want to hear what you say. I, I I pretty much already know what you're going to say yeah. because I see you watch certain things on TV and hear you talk about them after the fact. So I know that you're going to talk about them on the podcast. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sometimes I listen to see what you're going to say about me. Really? <laughs> That's fair. But for the most part, I mean, like I say, I, I know I have a better idea of what you're going to talk about every week than anybody else does, because I, I see you watch certain things on TV. I see you follow certain people on social media as far as like YouTube, it, Yeah. because you watch some of those YouTube videos right here at the house, like uh your Matt's uh, off road recovery. Right. Yeah. Yeah, they're doing the the stuff with the heavy record that they built. They built a for those who don't know, check out Matt's off road recovery on YouTube. He built a big heavy heavy machinery wrecker type machine to make recoveries with off road. And this thing is a one of a kind situation. Um it's I don't even know the size of the tires. Fifty two inch, fifty eight inch something kind of tires. Everything on it is sort of made for the first time to go for this thing. And it's, it's almost like a monster truck in a way. Um, but I like the personalities of the people. I like the, the, the good heartedness of the main guy, Matt and his wife. And they do a lot of charity work for the community around them. I mean, they're just always giving money away and giving things away and trying to help out as many people as they can. Even, 
through the popularity of his channel, he realized that, oh, you know, people leave the the shop to go do their own venture, but also I can help promote them through the people who just watch my channel. Why should they not also watch these people? And so he's constantly promoting people around him, which is really important. And well, I mean, his channel's good. I don't necessarily watch every single video. I do see you watch them. Yeah. Um, th they're they're interesting enough yeah. to some to me. We have, I guess, last year when we got into watching itchy boots. Itchy boots was the first time. No, I've actually had another person that I've watched for a couple of years, but I never watched them as consistently as I did, as we did itchy boots. Yeah. Well, and now she's, she's touring through Africa in season seven of her grand adventure around the world. Um, there's a lot of the stuff in the desert that she's just like, Oh my God, it's so amazing. And I'm like, it just looks Brown. Yeah. Everything you're looking at just looks Brown. I mean, I don't know. There was some weird fascination with her going through South America and, you know, making it through the Americas and then into Canada and, and Alaska to see the transition of the people and how different they were. And, and, and we know a little bit of conversational Spanish enough to kind of pick up on a few things, but then she had subtitles below, which was super helpful. And I think you and I were both amazed that she's doing all this kind of by herself and filming herself and yeah. editing and putting up videos and, and still navigating the world and learning all these languages. And now she's in Africa and it seems like she's made herself learn several new dialects of um, not only, you know, African dialects, but, you know, Moroccan and stuff like it that. It seems to me like, and I mean, and she's only a couple of episodes into this season. I, I, I'm finding that last her last season was more interesting than this. Now, yeah. maybe this will, it will change. The one thing I do like about her videos is the fact that they're not, they're not super long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I do like that because it, it's not like it, it's 20 to 30 minutes max. Yeah. I think it's super dangerous what she's doing. Oh, too. I and, agree. 100%. And, you know, the idea that she's in these countries and by herself, I mean, it, it puts herself at risk in a way that, you know, I, I'm watching it and I'm worried about her, but also there's nothing we can do as viewers no. other than going, okay, I hope you navigate this. Okay. Especially when she runs across militant groups who are in the middle of some fight with their country, you know, and, and at times she's gotten in some dangerous situations and sometimes and most, and every time she's gotten out of it, but it's still, it's one of those things where you're going, yeah, at any moment, these videos could just stop. Yeah. I mean, she's definitely an interest, very interesting person. Yeah. But you know, it, so there is there is that kind of stuff, and there's also the TV shows that I watched, and it's yeah. some of it's good, some of it's not great, some of it's I'm watching because I got invested early, and I'm like, well, I just kind of want to see where this goes. Um, but yeah, anything interesting this past week that you watched? The Alice in Borderlands is is really interesting. Now that's um, a continuation because you've been watching that one, right? I watched it uh, for the last couple of weeks, uh, off and on. It's um, each episode is around an hour. Um, is that what you were watching last night? Yes. Okay. So there's two seasons. It's uh, sort of like Squid Games. It's based in Japan. You never really fully find out what's going on in the two seasons um, as far as how they ended up in the situation they're in. But they have to constantly play these games, uh, which are life and death situations. And in that process, they have to sometimes make decisions that are sort of moral breaking of their own sense of right and wrong. Um, there is a lot of it that has some Japanese philosophy mixed in with it too, where sometimes the players and the people administrating the game challenge each other in, in a very Japanese philosophy kind of way that I thought was pretty interesting, but also there was moments of it where I was like, yeah, this part's kind of dragging on 10 minutes too long. They what, could, they could edit this part out. On? It's on Netflix. Netflix. Um, and it's it's a great adventure. I mean, even with the the people dubbing their voices and and the the you know the captions underneath, um, it's still a really good show. Um, I just don't watch. I mean, I I don't watch as much as you watch. Yeah. I'm more into reading. Well, now, right now we're watching what? Uh, we're watching, Banks. We're watching Mandalorian. Watching Mandalorian. <laughs> that's what two episodes so far. Three. Three. Has it been three already? Hasn't it been three? No. Has it only been two? Two. 
Oh, okay. Two. Two. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's two. It is two. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So we're not going to spoil anything. Um, you find it. It's because it's already been out for uh, almost a week. So we're going to just talk about it anyway. But it's it's just, oh, gosh, there's a lot. You don't understand the background, which I don't. Some of it is very confusing. But they're telling you all the all the rules you need to know. I mean, they're, they're telling I'm just telling you more stuff behind the scenes of why it's such a cool experience yes but in this last episode whenever he fell into the water number one it pulled him in oh i did not know that i thought he jumped yeah. in i mean no. i okay no it pulled him in so the idea is is that it's it, it's basically picking him is what i've heard huh now on youtube there's a guy his name's charlie he's got a channel called emergency awesome and he goes into depths about the episodes and talks about all the Easter eggs that he's found. And then people chime in and he does a follow up and talks I about things that other people see. He just gives way too many facts too quickly. He does, but he does a really good job with editing of showing you video as references so that he's not just naming names. It's it's like image person, image person. This is with this. This but is he with does. that. Man, he gives a lot of information. He's quickly. very he's very quick. Um and I mean, his episode rundowns are still like 25 minutes long and he's cramming a ton of information in there. Uh, but it's, uh, I'm liking the Mandalorian. I think it's really cool. They've introduced the, the famous mythosaur, which is the, the big symbol of Boba Fett and all of the Mandalorians. I just want to know when Grogu is going to talk. Is Gro he going to talk? Grogu's talking more and more every day. He's uh, not talking. He's just sure making he sounds. <laughs> He's just making sounds. That lady said he said Pelly. So yeah, well that's <laughs> she's a ding dong. She's a ding dong. <laughs> Although she's definitely, I understand why they keep bringing her back because she's funny. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She's a funny actress. Yeah, and she's she's sort of instrumental in moving the story along to give you dialogue of what you're not seeing because there's questions she asks that we're thinking. Right. Yeah. She she acts as the as the viewer in a way. Well, hey, here's the little guy. Is he talking yet? You know, yeah. stuff we want to know. Yeah. And oh, are, think... you, are you here in town to, to help Boba Fett fight another hut? Do you think he'll talk this season? <sighs> no. Do you think he I know everybody refers to Mando as his daddy mm -hmm. do you think he sees him as his daddy i mean he's like a father figure okay but pedro's kind of taken on that position before with tv shows and and this is no different than his uh, in a lot of ways his character on this is us or the last of us on hbo um which is their season finale is uh tonight as a matter of fact so i'll watch it in the morning um <clears throat> yeah if you're not watching the last of us this is really fantastic this past week was awesome bella ramsey is uh is a badass so yeah he probably sees him as a father figure uh they have a bond between the two of them um you know he i think he grogu realizes that he he could have been like mando could have showed up and just killed him but instead he protected him and he's fought for him yeah and he sought him out and he's brought him presents and he's Taking them on trips, yeah. teaching them how to fly around the galaxy, showing them where planets are, and introducing them to new Mandalorians. And I mean, what's not to like? It's all great. They're on a family trip, man. And Bo Katan could be new mommy. I mean, that'd be great. It's, um, yeah, <clears throat> it, it, there's, a lot, there's a lot. There's a lot. There is a lot. And I think they're doing a good job of making it uh, kid friendly enough for kids to watch yeah but how many people do you actually think picked up on the thing in the water because i don't know that i would have had you not pointed it out but okay so here's the thing is do you show it and then say oh my god it's a crate dragon or do you just show it and let people go what the hell was that so they go and they ask questions and people yeah, talk i guess that makes sense you're creating the buzz right this is the same thing about going to a, a, a fast food place if there's not a line don't stop there because their food's not fresh right you got to create a buzz and have people wanting to see did next they, week to find out more him information and her talk about it once she got him out of the water no, no it actually ended no she was in shock and he was like just struggling to breathe because yeah. he, he was underwater for a long time 
And uh, it was a heck of an episode for him. I mean, there was a lot going on in that episode. Well, I mean, yeah, we got to see Grogu go off on his own. Him. Yeah, we got to see Grogu go off on his own and, and fly in the, the spaceship to go find Bo Katan to save him. And we got to see Bo Katan wield the dark saber and slash a crazy monster that she's definitely better with the dark saber than he is. He is such a badass. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of people are like, why is she better at than him? And, and people have made memes on internet about, well, cause he's carrying the whole franchise. So it's a lot heavier. <laughs> I guess so. Which there's a lot of truth to that, <laughs> but you know, in, in the, the lore of the show, I mean, the, the armor tells him that, uh, the weight is basically his, uh, all of his fears about being a leader and that uh, until you, until you let go of those fears and embrace your role, that you won't be able to wield it. It has its own special powers connected to him or the wielder of the dark mm-hmm. saber, which is why she can wield it so well, because she believes she's the rightful ruler. Okay. I did see in the kind of podcasts that I follow, which is usually Disney news and updates that the Mandalorian and Grogu are now characters that walk around in, yeah. in, in it had been in Disneyland at um was it Galaxy's Edge. Mm-hmm. They've just started in Orlando. I don't think it Grogu is I think it's just Mando with like a pouch with yeah. with Grogu in the pouch. Wonderful scene in May. Whenever we go to Disney. Well, that's the plan. <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't we? I hope so be weird if we didn't i think they just started in orlando i mean that's something a character that they just brought to the parks just yeah. recently just within the last couple of weeks yeah and i'm sure it probably had something to do with this season coming out well and also i don't know if you noticed in the intro credits whenever they're flashing the images of the different people vader and r2d2 and they got the the ig11 droid as a flash image So I think they're going to bring that droid back, even though we didn't see him in this episode. Which one's that one? He was the skinny one that saved the day in the first. Oh, the one that Mando's trying to rebuild. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think they're going to bring him back. And I I think they're going to bring him back because he's going to, I think he's going to be an an actual animatronic thing at Disney World and Disneyland. I think he's actually going to be their first walking, talking thing. Well, you did see that. The uh the clip that I sent you of, of the, the Disney thing. Imagineers with the animatronic that 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 can does a flip does a flip and stands up yeah yeah well I mean they've also done that Spider Man thing yes but he but I is think that's not the same people I think that's the oh same yeah yeah group yeah it's as... the same group it's the Disney Imagineers yeah but they're probably walk, working pretty closely with that that robotics uh who is it the Boston Boston Dynamics. Robotics That's actually company. the the one that I sent you the clip of is the little the rabbit from Zootopia. Yeah, Judy Hobbs. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that was why they. That's had what the, the ears ear. were for. Yes, that's okay. Judy Hobbs. All right, cool. They, they're going to use that apparently for filming. You know, I mean, to for shows. I get. I don't know. I mean, I know that it's something. I'm sure it's something they'll bring to the parks. No, they're they're not going to build that for shows. They're building that for real life interaction they're building that because people want to see it in person yeah um they're going to have some element of look pretty cool of an animatronic type show and with ai growing who knows maybe it'll walk and talk and interact just like uh all the other things there yeah maybe it's crazy it's crazy the stuff that's happening i mean the technology they they will not bring the spider-man you will not see that in orlando you don't think? No, you can't. They can't do those characters in the Orlando parks because of the licensing agreement with Marvel. Hmm. Those, all of those rights, Universal owns all those rights. So you and I did a thing where we got to go into a virtual type experience as stormtroopers. Yeah. And walking around and shoot things and stuff like that. Do you think they'll ever do that with uh, like Marvel characters? Like, do you think they could do I a don't virtual... know. The company that was doing that you had a lot of success with it at Disney Springs, but then COVID hit. Yeah. They did not open back up after COVID. Okay. Um, Maybe they sold their technology to somebody else. Or... Not sure on that. I do know that there is a, there are some things you will not ever see in the Orlando parks because of the marveling, because of the Marvel 
licensing agreement. Okay. There's a totally different agreement in place in California than what they can do over in uh, on this side of the Mississippi. It's something that was entered into years ago that will be a very long time before Disney ever gets those rights back all because they didn't own them to begin with. And when that contract was was actually that's why you have Spider-Man and some of the Marvel characters in Universal and you do not have them in Orlando. Yeah. But they have a Marvel theme a Marvel themed land at Disneyland and they do not have that here or or in Orlando. And from what I hear listening to the podcast that I listen to, because a lot of it is hit, you know, history and up current updates, news. It's not anything that's gonna happen anytime soon. The next land that's been uh, rumored to expand will be um, their in animal kingdom, Zootopia. They're bringing right. that to the that section of the park where Dino Dino Land, Dino Land, whatever yeah. it's called. That that will be the next expansion, I think. Well, that would be cool. Um, I kind of wonder what rides they'll have incorporated with it because they're famous for like reusing rides. But we know they're not going to use that Dino Spin ride anymore they because they said they, they don't make parts for it anymore and they can't even get it. It's parts not for even it there. They've completely demolished it. So they got to re engineer a whole new thing for that. Yes. Do you think they're going to tear down Dinosaur or re engineer it as a Probably re engineered. I can't see them tearing it down. Yeah. Because that's not a terrible ride. Yeah, it's just a lot of herky jerky stuff. It is. I'm sure that they could just do different technology with that. Yeah. I'm looking forward to our trip. Yes, me too. Um, we have a trip plan going to Disney and, uh, the idea is my mom is going and we're going the same week. And so we're going to get to ride some of the new rides. Um, Tron, obviously, uh, the Gal guardians of the galaxy ride, um, and Ratatouille are the yeah. three rides that we haven't rode before that have been new since we've been last. We and haven't been since not to Disney world we have not been since february of 21 yeah and i, I feel confident years. that we'll get on um well we haven't you have i have just for a weekend <laughs> to see a fireworks show i mean i was not really concentrating on any on rides that weekend <clears> but yes i've been since but i don't think we'll have it i think we'll i feel pretty confident we'll get on um the ratatouille and um guardians of the galaxy I yeah. think that'll be pretty easy. Yeah. Tron's going to be a totally different story. Although True. I'm not going to get my hopes up because I've heard, a, I probably, I've, I've seen and heard less excitement over it or people being disappointed after they ride it. A lot of the YouTube videos, people that I follow that, that go down there have season tickets that's been able to do the previews. They're like, it's great, but it's just, it's quick. It's very quick. It's under a minute. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a long time to wait in line. Or I think this will prob probably be virtual queue like we had to do for Rise of the Resistance. Yeah. Which means you have to be up and online at 7 a.m. every morning. You have to have a park reservation for that day for the Magic Kingdom. And then you have to see if you can get in the queue. If you don't, then there will be a second queue at one o'clock, but you have to be in the Magic Kingdom at one o'clock in order to get in that queue. Well, to me, that what that tells me is uh, with this new exciting ride that all the people are going to be over there so we can get on Seven Doors Mine Train a lot quicker. I'm hoping. <laughs> that, that, that's the hope. That's the hope. Because that's a fun ride. Because that is definitely a fun ride. It's a ride. cute ride. It's fun. Uh, for people, you know, starting their kids off on a roller coaster, it's a cute one to start them on because it's very smooth. Yeah. And that, you know, that's a little more than, I mean, I mean you the, have to the be cars a car's kind of rock. It, and, I it, mean, it's, oh, there's nothing it's smooth. It's very smooth. I don't know that, and that would be cute because it's got the story and it's, it's a great it. ride. Yeah. I liked it. Um, so yeah, we got that trip going. Super excited about that. We got a couple trips planned this year. Um, so looking forward to all those things and, um, uh, yeah. Thank you for doing this. No, sure. Not a problem. Thank you for putting up with me doing 400 episodes. Yeah. I know there's been a lot of... <laughs> you're the one with the camera time, not me. I know there's a, I know there's a lot of conversations where you're like, all right, how many are you going to do? Oh, geez. <laughs> it's hard to believe it's been 400 already. Especially I know. since you started at the desk. 
Yes. I started at the desk with, with just the lap. No, I started at the desk with, I started with just my phone. Yes. I would just find somewhere to sit where nobody was and talking to me. And that was whenever you did it on. Um, just on Anchor. Anchor. And you, if you got a phone call. I lost the episode. You lost the episode. I yeah. do remember that. Yeah. And then I got the, I got the little plug-in USB mic that was, it was okay, but the wire had a weird thing in it where if I touched it, it would crackle. And yeah. you're like, listen, I, I like it, but you got to change that microphone. That is awful. Yeah. <laughs> and then I've been through uh, two sound boards. I had a smaller board and then I bought this one that sounds a little better. It's got more microphone ability and that kind of thing. Um, and then, and then I was like, I'm going to build a room. You're like, Oh geez. Yeah. Yeah. And here we are. It has definitely, it's gotten better. Yeah. Sound quality's gotten better. Sound quality is a little better. Um, still using the the twenty eight dollar microphones from the beginning uh, that I when I first went over to XLR microphones. Um, I know that there's a lot of podcasts I listen to. Their sound quality is a lot better, and they're using those four hundred dollar ones. And I'm not, I'm just not eager to spend four hundred dollars on a microphone, not for this hobby. I mean, it's just, I don't know. It's a hard. That's a hard pill to swallow. Four hundred dollars for a microphone. Yeah, you spend more money own this than you make right so i'm like you i it, the sound quality is not bad so i don't see spending that i don't see spending that kind of money yeah yeah i agree i um i mean now when you get your viewership up to joe rogan status then then we can well then, then i need an engineer and a then, then studio we'll, we'll, we'll talk and, we'll talk then yeah yeah um <laughs> I'm, i got a long way to go for that you gotta have goals yeah hundred million dollars. I'll tell you where I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> Listen here, woman, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. But thank you for being supportive still, even with this crazy hobby. Sure. Appreciate it. Anytime. So that's it folks. I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, thank everybody for listening. Thanks for watching. We are on YouTube. We do have the website, Uh Log in. Tell me you're there. Give me a little shout out. Tell me you hate it. Tell me something. Uh, interactions are good. So if you want to be on the podcast, let me know. And uh, if you like this, rate, rate it, review, rate, review subscribe, subscribe, give me a big thumbs up, all that fun stuff. And uh, yeah, always end this by saying cue the cow. So cue the cow. So I want you guys to give me more likes. Give me more likes.